Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to my Premier League predictions. There's a lot of good news in this video but before we get started on all, all this good news, this video is sponsored by Tear Bear Printing. Use the word sport as it says on your screen and get 10% off your purchase price. So go and make sure you go do that small thing and hopefully be sending them on match very, very soon. Anyway, the lot of good news coming this weekend I have a big chance in the Europa League and maybe a Champions League I'm not too sure about that but anyway fans will be allowed back into the stadiums for a league game first time since March since this pandemic you know started only some grounds I know some grounds I've been on I have been fortunate enough to let their fans back in there but hopefully before long they should be able to Another good bit of news is we have actually bought, well, I, we haven't bought it out, but there's a vaccine coming out very soon, hopefully before too long. We should be able to go back to full capacity, obviously baby steps with all this that's going on. But as I say, fans back into the stadium, a lot of games to decide, so guys, you know what to do, give us a lot, big thumbs up if you enjoy it, subscribe for more, thanks for watching, and let's go. So the first game we are kick off with is Burnley versus Everton. Everton, to me, has really, you know, took the league by storm this season. I know they've had their few ups and downs, and I know, you know, it's not been easy. Burnley, on the other hand, are still really, you know, in that fight with the relegation uh, place. I'm not quite sure where they are on the table. But, you know, on that circumstance, I'm going to go for an Everton win. And I'm going to go for a 3-1 Everton win. My next one is Manchester City versus Fulham. Manchester City are, you know, doing okay. I think this Premier League season has really turned up a lot of shocks um, at this present time. I think Man City are just in the top 10, if I remember rightly. Fulham, on the other hand, sitting in the relegation zone. And basically, you know, really do need the three points for this week. This could be an interesting game. I'm not going to give Fulham the three points, but I'm not going to give City the three points either. I'm going to be a little bit bold, and I'm going to go for a 2-2 scoreline for that one. My next one, and it's the first game fans will be allowed back into the stadium, is West Ham versus Manchester United. West Ham have taken the league by storm. Now, you know, with West Ham taking it by storm, Man United do have these little dippy spells, you know, now and again. I'm going to go for a West Ham win, I think, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 West Ham win. My next one is Chelsea versus Leeds United. Yet again, fans are allowed in the stadium for this game. Only 2,000, which is no way for clubs to survive. Um, but you know, 2000 is better than nothing to start off with, anyway. Um, in it really, so move forward to the game. Leeds United have you know really bogged down on you know about you know how they've took in this league. Chelsea, on the other hand, I think they're sitting in the top four and might just be outside. But going forward to this game, I'm gonna go for a draw and I'm gonna go for a 2 2 scoreline for that one. My next one is West Bromwich Albion versus Crystal Palace. West Bromwich Albion are one of these teams that, yeah, again, are fighting in that relegation dogfight. Crystal Palace are not too far away from that dogfight itself. This is a big week, whether the relegation zone gets more teams in it. I think Palace are on 13 points. If... West Brom win, I believe that takes them up to, I'm just having a lucky guess, 9, maybe 10. So, you know, it really does get bogged down with, you know, what's going on there. Crystal Palace really do need to win this game. I'm going to back Palace to do it, and I'm going to go for a 2-0 Palace win for that one. My next one is Sheffield United versus Leicester City. Sheffield United, bottom of the table... Struggling to get points, you know, at the present in time. Leicester City, on the other end of the table, I'm going to 
back Leicester to win this one and I'm going to go for a 3-1 Leicester City win. My next one and fans are allowed back into the stadium for this one. Only the home fans though. But it is the North London derby. It's Tottenham versus Arsenal. Tottenham are one of these teams that do have their good uh, periods in football this season. I think they're in the top four. Arsenal on the other hand, well, where do we start with them? Um, you know, Arsenal done ever so well uh, against Wolves. Losing 2-1 though, no, but the biggest talking point is that David Luiz, you know, accident against River Raul Jimenez. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right. Apologies if I'm not. Should he have gone off? I believe he should have, but he didn't. This is where Premier League needs to come up with bigger rules. Maybe concussion subs. Maybe we could roll something like that in because him playing on uh, Jimenez being knocked out, uh, being in hospital. No, I think he's made his first statement, so it looks good. But come on, Premier League, start making head injuries more important than these five minute checks. I mean, you know, maybe send them for scans for hospital, especially if they knock someone out. How hard did they hit their head? Um, but going forward to the game, I'm going for a Tottenham win and I'm going to go for a 2-0 Tottenham win. My next one is Liverpool versus Wolverhampton. Liverpool uh, qualified for the Champions League last night as I'm recording this, but in the league, draw into Brighton. Yes, that late, late last minute penalty. <sighs> now... I ain't going to talk about this Brighton game because I will talk about it when I get down to Brighton, which is my last game for this video. But Klopp saying Robinson was tired, Robinson was, you know, I would have took him off, fuck, make the five subs, Robinson. But yet again, he's still playing 90 minutes in the Ajax game. You know, you can't say players tired, go up to Liverpool, couple of days rest, and he's, yeah, don't worry about like Klopp, unfortunately. Yeah, again, the five sub all came into question. And basically, really, I'll tell you what, you can bring the five sub all in. I know Liverpool's not the only one. I know City are another one trying to push it through. Um, and I know probably one more club, I'm not 100% sure on that. But you give the smaller clubs 200 million each. So the lock, like clubs of Brighton, Crystal Palace, Leeds United, Fulham. And then do the five sub rule. I don't like that five sub rule. I don't think it should have really came into play when it did, but I understand why it was, and that's due to COVID 19. And that's the only reason why this five sub rule has popped up. Let's not forget that. It's popped up due to a virus. Going forward to the game, I'm going to go for a draw, and I'm going to go for a one all scoreline for that one. My last one, as I've said, Brighton and Albion versus Southampton. Fans were allowed in. Only Brighton fans, though, and I am one of the unlucky ones on getting a ticket. But, you know, we have to move on. Now we're going to talk about the penalty. Do I believe that that was a penalty for Brighton on Danny Welbeck? I believe it was, but only because there was contact. If you could prove there's contact in the box, then, yeah, every bit of contact really should be a penalty. Especially when you don't get much of the ball. Let's not forget it's called football. I understand what Robertson tried to do and he nearly got away with it as well. You know, um, he tried to kick the ball away from Welbeck, but Welbeck just got his foot there first. So, you know, I do I'm a big fan of VAR, but not let now let's not get I I think VAR has been against every Premier League club this season. If not this season then last season. So most of the Premier League clubs would have had VAR against them. We've definitely had over last season. I'm not sure uh, yeah, it has been against us this season as well, just thinking about it. But let's not forget, it could go against us against Southampton. I will still be a big fan of VAR. So, you know, and I'll sit there in front of a Bats Brighton Stadium going, I still want VAR. Let's take the technology out and it still leave us with the same sort of problem. Going forward to the game, Southampton are sitting kind of t top three, top four, if I remember. Um, Brighton, on the other hand, picked up a big point against Liverpool, a big three points against uh, Aston Villa away from home. I'm going to call this one a draw, and I'm going to go for a 2-2 scoreline for that one.
But anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more, thanks for watching, ciao for now.